Hey guys, it's me. I'm, uh, I'm off to Jacksboro, Texas today to Fort Richardson State Park to test out my Jeep camping setup. So I got my bed in the back. I got my Boog RV fridge here right beside me. And uh, I got some Jackeries and uh, just, just gonna be a quick one night trip to test out my setup and see, see how well it works, see if I need to make any improvements to it. I'm gonna be camping with my brother-in-law, David, who's also got a truck tent set up that I think you guys will like to see. So we're here at uh, Jacksboro Well at uh, Fort Richardson State Park. I got my Jeep Wrangler set up, and then that's David's setup with uh, his truck tent. Um, I'll start with mine real quick, and then we'll go right over to David's. Um, I still got all my clothes and stuff in here. I'm gonna push all that over the side whenever I actually go to bed, but I got a, a two inch memory foam. I got my flat deck. I'll leave a link to the in the description to the actual video where I built this thing and installed it. But uh, tonight's gonna be the first night I actually try it out. Uh, on this side, I got my, uh, these are Deep Sleep, I think is the brand name. <clears throat> and they just go cover up so that way you can keep your windows open and still have a little bit of airflow. And then here's a, a uh, fan that I've just used these little red bungees for and strapped up there on the top so if I get hot which I don't think I will because it's supposed to get down to the 40s tonight uh, but if I do get hot or stuffy I can turn that air on and get some airflow through here and then it's USB powered it actually has a built-in battery too but you can plug it into USB and I just have that USB cable run down here to the side I'm gonna set I've got a Jackery 300 that I'm gonna set right here I've got a heated blanket just in case it gets too cold and I can plug that into the Jackery and uh, we'll see. That's another experiment. I don't know how long uh, if I can go. I mean, that's got a three hour timeout on it, but if I need the heated blanket to be running all night, uh, I don't know if that Jackery will be able to keep up, but I guess we'll find out in the morning. David, what about your setup? You want to talk about, um, we'll talk about your setup. So you've got, you've got a Ford Ranger here, right? With a custom, uh, right. Well, I, I wrecked the old truck with oh. most of the old bed. Oh yeah. Built a custom bed on it, so it's a eight foot long instead of a six foot long. Okay. All right. Um, and it's five feet wide, so we found this eight by five tent. Yeah. That'll fit pretty good, and the bed is made of wood, so we're able to just kind of screw into the the wood. Yeah. Just take it down. Yeah, that's cool. So, so you've got uh, just was it probably two by sixes? Right running so the whole bed is is well it's a steel frame but it's got a two by six wood deck and then you've got this little rubber mat but uh so actually to stake it down that's really cool so you didn't have to run a screw or anything like that through here you just ran it through uh the strap that's really cool and it worked out pretty good to have this rack on here um because i was able to just tie these yeah supports to it yeah that's cool too i mean normally because a, a tent like this you would you would have to stake these down to the ground, so you didn't have to do that in this case because you were able to just tie it up to your rack. Right. That's cool. And so you got your uh, mummy winter rated sleeping bag in there, and then what's what about you got a foam pad you're sleeping on too? Right. That's the. You sent me a link to this twin size, two inch memory foam yeah. pad. How much was this? Do you remember? I don't remember. It may have been thirty bucks, thirty five or something. Yeah, thirty five or forty, somewhere around there. Okay. Cool. Yeah, so that beats uh, an air mattress for sure. Yeah, I can feel it. <laughs> it, it it's that memory foam that kind of contours to your body. Nice. So, have you ever slept in this thing? Not yet. Tonight will be the first night. All right. Well, uh, same same with me. So we're testing out our setups, and we're gonna wake up in the morning and uh, talk about how we feel and if it worked out well. I'm gonna attempt to light this fire with this. LC Fun flashlight. It has a plasma or something like that lighter on it that's electric. <clears throat> I've got a couple pieces of fat wood in here. If this doesn't work, I'll have to use paper. All right. See? Fat wood lights up pretty good. Let me see from the camera. It didn't take much because that fat wood, the resins come out of it. Mm -hmm. It's almost like natural fire starter.
see if that'll start. Maybe shove this one down like this. There we go. Let's see what that does. Start pretty easily. And then once these get going, then uh, once those get going and burning good, we should be good enough to put your big ones on. Splintered up so much. Mm -hmm. Maybe just do that. Let that run for a minute. So our first meal, this is actually David's, we've got roast chicken flavored ramen. And if you've watched uh, one of my previous Will It Run It videos, I've got an electric kettle and I've got a Jackery 300. So that's how we're going to cook this stuff. Our campsite has water. I want to fill it all the way. There we go. All right, that's close. Get turn on. There we go. Turn on the inverter. And I got it boiling. It's at 280 watts, which is about what it pulls. Oh no, some okay. of your ramen dispenser destroyed. There. Is that right? I think so. I didn't read the Except instructions. Except, you didn't? <laughs> You're supposed to put the lid back on. I know, it broke off. And let it sit for uh, three minutes. There's a lot of things David forgot. We'll go over the list of things we all forgot later, but we'll do that. I would loan you my spoon, but I'm trying to decide if I'm gonna need it. Because if I loan it to you, I'm not gonna get to use it. All right, so now I have boiled 12 ounces of water for my meal. I'm gonna pour the whole thing in there. So I think this is about 12 ounces. It should be pretty close. Okay. The Jackery is at 62%. It's also running my Boog RV 12 volt fridge. Add 12 ounces of boiling water. Oh, stir carefully and close the zipper. Oops, I just closed the zipper. So I ended up loaning David my spoon. Oh yeah, I feel it now. You definitely want to stir that up. Your ramen costs a fraction of my freeze dried meal. David prefers not to have his face on camera, so we're gonna go from from <laughs> from from shoulders down. How's the ramen, David? It's pretty good. It's pretty hot. Is it? Oh yeah. Good. So the electric kettle worked out. So while I'm waiting, I gotta give mine five minutes, and it's been 46 seconds. While we're waiting, we're gonna talk about so far what we've learned and what we've forgotten on this trip. So as you can see, the fire's been a raging success. David was kind enough to bring a decent amount of firewood. That should last us definitely for one day. But you can probably tell by looking at David that he's not sitting on a camping chair. <laughs> so that was the first thing David forgot. Forgot to bring the proper tools for removing my spare tire. Oh, spare tire, yep. Yeah, we, uh, there's a nail and we found a nail in David's tire, so. We uh, inflated it once and it didn't last long, so we put the spare on. And So what tools, let's see, it was, uh, well, we had a jack and... Uh, I guess mainly something to get the, uh, the spare tire out. It's the main thing. We ended up having everything we needed. Yeah, I, I think the biggest thing was just the bolt, right? Right. Uh, but you had channel locks that worked. Mm -hmm. um, your jack worked. We just, uh, you know, like a bunch of amateurs, forgot to chalk the wheels. <laughs> and so we, uh, we got it lifted up, and as soon as I pulled the tire off, it uh, rolled backwards, and I was like, get out, get out, <laughs> David. And I threw the tire back out of the vehicle, and it landed on the tire. So that could have that ended up in a trip to the hospital, but, or worse. Yeah, David had a wheel chalk. We just forgot to put it in.
forgot silverware too. Silverware, yeah. And you're I using. I almost forgot food. You're using my spoon. Yeah, I almost forgot food. David, you made two sandwiches and you brought cereal, right? Dry cereal. Dry cereal. And uh, he ate both of his sandwiches and then said, maybe we should run to town and go to the grocery store and get some more food. Some little Debbie's. So he got some little Debbie snacks uh, and some ramen, a thing of ramen. And um, I brought some uh, beef ravioli that we're gonna cook here a little bit on the fire. And um, so you're, you can have beef ravioli. The problem is it's gonna be a little tough eating it with just a spoon. But this ramen is pretty tricky to eat with a spoon. Yeah, yeah, you got the spoon. I, I have a fork and a spoon and a knife. And so I said, well, you can use the spoon because I don't think I'm gonna use it, but the fork's for me. I'm not, I don't mean to just pick on David because I forgot to bring my hat. David's wearing a, a hat, which if I could show his face, you would see that, but uh, it's, it's supposed to get down to the 40s tonight, and I do have jackets, so at least I'm good there, but uh, as long as we keep this fire raging, it, should be, it shouldn't be too bad. So a, a beanie for me to keep the heat in. So another idea that we have is we're running two 60-watt equivalent light bulbs, LED light bulbs. Um, Jackery says it is pulling 15 watts on the inverter there. And uh, the difference in these bulbs is they're silicone. The outside of them are silicone. I bought these at Lowe's on clearance. I don't know how I paid for them, but... Uh, and then I just built this little contraption. Uh, just this little weatherproof uh, light socket. And then I soldered it to some 18 gauge lamp wire. I have a whole bunch of this lamp wire in bulk. And then cut the end off and stuck it into a, you know, a standard plug here. And then I got this little adapter so I could plug multiple ones in. But that, uh, that's how we're doing our lights. We don't have a propane lantern. We're going to see how well these things work. Also running on the Jackery 300, I've got uh, this Boog RV. It's actually pulling right now 36 watts. I know I've done a lot of videos on how long this can run on a Jackery, but um, you know, being just one night, I thought that Jackery 300 ought to be able to keep up. Uh, on the drive here, I just had it plugged into my vehicle since my vehicle was running um, and it ran on that. So the Jackery was at 100% when I got here, but all the essentials, we got bottled waters and we got Dr. Peppers, uh, which is what I have for breakfast. <laughs> but yeah, so far, we are at 62% on the Jackery. We have boiled um, three, uh, two different things. And in the morning, I've got another boil that I'm gonna need to do on that electric kettle for my freeze dried meal in the morning. Um, and then the rest of it has been just running this fridge. So this is another trick that uh, one of my camping buddies taught me. This is a can of beef ravioli for David. And you pop the lid. Get the kind with the poppable lids, because I know David's gonna forget the can opener. <laughs> and then don't take it completely off, because you're gonna need to be able to grab it. Hopefully, let me see if that works. Yeah, that works, okay. And then lower it down into the fire. Oh, there's like a thing right there. Probably too close. That may work. You got a flame coming right up the side of it. So now you'll let it run there for, I don't know. I don't even know how long, just a little while. And then we can rotate it, heat the other side. I don't know, maybe five, 10 minutes. And then pull it off, let it cool down and eat it. It's definitely warm now, it's boiling. So let me grab it with our pliers. Be real gentle with it because you don't want that lid to pop off and all your food go into the fire. Now let me use your super bright flashlight. See the bubbles? It was boiling when it was on the fire. There's definitely steam coming out of it though. It is morning now after a night of sleeping 
it got down to 43 it's currently 54 it's definitely warming up pretty quick but um when i woke up it i don't remember what it said but the low was 43 i slept pretty good overall um i think the the narrowness or the the length wise was a little bit of an issue because a few times i woke up to stretch and i couldn't because my feet were touching the tailgate but uh, temperature wise I was okay. I had uh, my heated blanket and I did plug it into the Jackery 300. That's a 160. Um, for some reason the heated blanket won't run on the 160. It should be able to because it doesn't pull that much power. Um, it was pulling like 40 watts or something like that but whenever I plug it in it just flashes. I don't know if you can see that. The high is just flashing on it and it says it's pulling 6 watts. So I need to figure that one out. I know this worked back at the house. I don't know if it's a problem with the heated blanket or a problem with the Jackery, but uh, it was running on the Jackery 300. Um, but uh, I didn't really use. I didn't rely on it. I just kind of used it to heat up the bed whenever I first got in, and it got pretty comfortable. Um, but the problem was I did let it run all night, and this morning I woke up to a Jackery that had 16%, and I was like, oh, that's a problem. Um, now it's at 0% because I ran my electric kettle and I got it about halfway done. The Jackery was at 8% and then it just shut off. It said, I'm done uh, and quit, quit feeding it. So I had lukewarm freeze-dried meal for breakfast this morning. <clears throat> David, how about you? How was your setup? I said it worked pretty good. It was a little cold last night, I guess, being in a tent. Yeah. But uh, having it off the ground was pretty nice. Yeah. Having a level service. How was your mattress pad, your foam topper? I mean, it felt just like sleeping on any mattress. It did. It did. I noticed mine, it was fine, but I think the cold made it a little more firm because mm -hmm. I didn't, it didn't really kind of pad as much. It still felt fine. I mean, I'm not complaining. Um, I did just notice that. I don't know if yours was the same way. I think um, it felt pretty much like normal. It felt normal. Cool. Well, there you go. There's our, there's our setup and our review. Let's see, I was talking about a number of things that I forgot uh, still, and one of them was, like I was saying, the Jackery battery died, but that's the only Jackery I have that's powerful enough to run my electric kettle. I still have 68% in my smaller Jackery, but I didn't bring any charge cables whatsoever. I don't know why I forgot to bring charge cables, but I could have just plugged the Jackery into my truck and gotten a little bit extra charge to be able to run that kettle a little bit longer or a, a cable to go from the small jackery and recharge the big one a little bit off that. Just enough to get power, but I forgot. The main purpose of this trip was to test our setup before our longer trip next week, and I feel like we accomplished our goal. We learned that we forgot a number of things and to make lists so that we don't forget critical items in the future. But we also learned that you can still camp out of your vehicle and have fun. If you like this video, please hit that like button and consider subscribing if you want to see more videos like this one. And now, a preview of my next video coming soon. So back from my camping trip and I already know, I haven't even unpacked yet, I still got all my stuff in here, my bedding. But one thing I already know what I want to do, uh, mod to the Jeep, is if you grab this, pull it off. There's two threaded slots here. I think I can just build myself a small shelf on this 